mutual information. It's really cool, gonna check it out now. StatQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to talk about mutual information and it's going to be clearly explained. I don't want to spend a lot of time scaling up my stuff to work in the cloud. I would rather spend my time working on my stuff because that's the fun part, lightning. This stat quest is also sponsored by the letters A, B, and C. A, always. B, B, C, curious. Always be curious. Imagine we had a data set with a lot of variables, which are also called features. And because we want to simplify the amount of time we spend collecting data, we wanted to remove some of them. Thus, we want to know how much each variable can tell us about the thing we want to predict. In this case, we want to predict if someone loves the movie Troll 2. And we want to know which of these variables likes popcorn, height, etc., play the biggest role in making good predictions. In theory, we could use something like R squared to see if a specific variable is related to Love's Troll 2. Except R squared only works with continuous data, and Love's Troll 2 is yes or no, and so is likes popcorn. By the way, if you're not familiar with R squared, you probably should be, so check out the quest. So, when we have a mixture of continuous and discrete variables, how do we quantify their relationship to the thing we want to predict? Well, one way to quantify how each variable is related to Love's Troll 2 is to use mutual, mutual information. information. Like R squared, mutual information is a numeric value that gives us a sense of how closely related two variables are. Bam! The equation for calculating mutual information looks kind of nasty. But don't worry, we'll go through it one step at a time. In a nutshell, these two sigmas, Greek characters that stand for summation, tell us that we're going to do a lot of addition. And we're going to be adding up joint probabilities and dividing some of those joint probabilities by marginal probabilities. Um, what are joint and marginal probabilities? Joint probabilities are just the probability of two things occurring at the same time. For example, given our data set, we can calculate the probability that someone likes popcorn and loves Troll 2. In this case, the probability that someone likes popcorn and loves Troll 2 is 3 divided by 5. Because 3 of the 5 people in the data set like popcorn and love Troll 2. In contrast, marginal probabilities are just the probability of one thing occurring. For example, if we just focus on likes popcorn, we can calculate the probability that someone does not like popcorn. In this case, the probability that someone does not like popcorn is 2 divided by 5, because 2 of the 5 people in the data set do not like popcorn. Likewise, we can calculate the marginal probability that someone does not love Troll 2. The probability that someone does not love Troll 2 is 1 divided by 5, because only one of the five people in the data set does not love Troll 2. Now, for any pair of variables, like likes popcorn and loves Troll 2, we can keep track of their joint and marginal probabilities in a table. In this table, the first two columns represent whether or not someone likes popcorn. And the first two rows represent whether or not someone loves Troll 2. The joint probability that someone likes popcorn and loves Troll 2, which we calculated earlier, goes in the upper left-hand corner of the table. Likewise, we can calculate the joint probability that someone does not like popcorn and loves Troll 2 and put that in the top of the second column. Now, if we want to know the marginal probability that someone loves Troll 2, we can either calculate it like we did earlier by dividing the number of people that love Troll 2 by the total number of people, 
Or we can simply add the joint probability that someone likes popcorn and loves Troll 2 to the joint probability that someone does not like popcorn and loves Troll 2. And when we do the math, we get 4 divided by 5. So, either way, we get the same marginal probability, 4 divided by 5. Likewise, we can solve for the remaining joint probabilities and plug them into the table. And we can solve for the marginal probability that someone does not love Troll 2, either directly from the data, or we can add up the two joint probabilities in the second row in the table. Either way, we get the same result. Then we can calculate the marginal probability that someone likes popcorn, either directly or by adding the values in the column together. Then we can calculate the marginal probability that someone does not like popcorn. Now we have a table filled out with all of the joint and marginal probabilities associated with likes popcorn and loves troll too. Bam! Note, the marginal probabilities are all in the margins of the table. So that's where the name comes from. Small bam. Anyway, now that we have this table of joint and marginal probabilities, for likes popcorn and loves troll too, we can calculate their mutual information by plugging the joint and marginal probabilities into this equation. The joint probabilities go here and here, and the marginal probabilities both go here. Note, the two summations ensure that we include all possible combinations of the variables, likes popcorn, yes and no, with loves troll too, yes and no. For example, we start by plugging in the joint and marginal probabilities for where both popcorn and loves troll too equal yes. Then we add a term where popcorn is yes and loves troll 2 is no. Then we add a term where popcorn is no and loves troll 2 is yes. And, lastly, a term where popcorn is no and loves troll 2 is no. Now that we have expanded this double summation by adding terms for all possible combinations of popcorn and loves troll 2, we plug in the joint and marginal probabilities that we calculated earlier. For example, the joint probability that someone likes popcorn and Troll 2 is 3 divided by 5, so we plug that in. And then we plug in the marginal probability that someone likes popcorn, 3 divided by 5, and the marginal probability that someone loves Troll 2, 4 divided by 5. Then we just plug in the joint and marginal probabilities for all of the other terms. Note, before we move on, I want to point out that the log function that we use in this equation can be any base. However, the default log function for most machine learning and most programming languages is the natural log. So that's what we use here. Anyway, when we do the math, the whole thing is equal to 0.22. So the mutual information between likes popcorn and loves troll 2 is 0.22. We can then compare this mutual information value, 0.22, to the mutual information values for other variables to decide which ones are the most useful. Double bam! Oh no, it's a super technical note! If you look carefully at this second term in the equation, You'll see that if we divide 0 by 5, then we'll get a 0 here, and we'll get a 0 in this numerator, which means the whole term is 0 times the log of 0. And, technically, the log of 0 is not defined. The good news is that even though the log of 0 is not defined, as x gets close to 0, x times the log of x equals 0. So the second term is just equal to zero. Tiny bam. Now let's go back to the raw data and see what happens when we change it so that likes popcorn is always yes. In other words, let's see what the mutual information is now that likes popcorn is always yes and never changes. So just like before, let's fill out the table of the joint and marginal probabilities. Beep, boop, boop. 
and now let's use the table to calculate the mutual information. First, let's expand the summation so that we have a term for all possible combinations of likes popcorn and loves troll too. Then we plug numbers into each term. Boop, 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 beep, boop, boop. And when we do the math, we get zero. In other words, when likes popcorn never changes, it can't tell us anything about what's happening in Love's Troll 2. And, in general, when at least one of the two columns never changes, then the mutual information will be zero. Because something that never changes can't tell us about something that does. Now let's go back to the raw data and see what happens when we change it so that likes popcorn is yes when loves troll 2 is yes, and likes popcorn is no when loves troll 2 is no. In other words, now both columns change, but they change in the exact same ways. So let's fill out the table of the joint and marginal probabilities. And use the table to calculate the mutual information. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And when we do the math, we get something close to, but not exactly, 0.5. So, given this data set, where the two columns change, and they change in the exact same ways, the mutual information is close to 0.5. And this value is larger than 0.22, which is what we got when we calculated the mutual information with the original data. And remember, both columns changed in the original data, but not in exactly the same ways. So, when both columns change, and the changes in one tell us more about what's going on in the other, then the mutual information value is larger. Now let's go back to the raw data again, and see what happens when we change it so that likes popcorn is yes when loves troll 2 is no, and likes popcorn is no when loves troll 2 is yes. In other words, let's see what the mutual information is when both columns change, but in the exact opposite ways. So we fill out the table of the joint and marginal probabilities and plug the numbers into the equation for mutual information. And when we do the math, just like when we had both columns change in the exact same ways, we get something close to, but not exactly, 0.5. In other words, when both columns change, it doesn't matter if they change in the exact same or exact opposite ways. They both give us the same mutual information. And the changes in one column can tell us exactly what is changing in the other. Double BAM! So far, we've seen how to calculate mutual information for two discrete variables, likes popcorn and loves troll too. How do we calculate the mutual information when we have a continuous variable like height? When we want to calculate the mutual information and one or more of the variables is continuous, then we simply create a histogram of the continuous values. And then we can use each bin in the histogram as a discrete category. And use the discrete categories to calculate the joint and marginal probabilities. Note. Because we have three bins in the histogram, we have three columns of joint probabilities in the table. And that means that when we expand the equation for mutual information, we end up with six terms because we have troll2 equals yes and troll2 equals no for each of the three bins. Then we just do the math and get 0.22. And since we got 0.22 for both likes popcorn and height, we can use either one. Triple BAM! One last note. If you're familiar with how entropy is used in data science, and if not, check out the quest, then you may have noticed that the equation for mutual information has a lot in common with the equation for entropy. They are both sums of probabilities times logs. These equations are similar because mutual information can be derived from entropy. And, in a sense, mutual information tells us how, on average, the surprise, or change, we see in one variable is related to the surprise, or change, in another. For example, 
do you remember when we calculated the mutual information and likes popcorn never changed? Well, when we have something that never changes, then the surprise is always zero. So it's no surprise that the mutual information is also zero because the changes in Love's Troll 2 have nothing to be related to. In contrast, when the surprise is greater than zero for both variables and the changes are related, then the mutual information will also be greater than zero and reflect how much the changes are related. Bam! Now it's time for some shameless self-promotion. If you want to review statistics and machine learning offline, check out the StatQuest PDF study guides and my book, The StatQuest Illustrated Guide to Machine Learning, at statquest.org. There's something for everyone. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting StatQuest. If you like this StatQuest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support StatQuest, consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, becoming a channel member, buying one or two of my original songs or a t-shirt or a hoodie, or just donate. The links are in the description below. Alright, until next time, quest on!